Okay, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, on behalf of SUNY OER Services, I want to welcome you to the brief webinar we're having today on Waymaker for Economics. I am Michelle Beachy, and I'm joined today by Jameson Miller from Lumen Learning, as well as Laura Murray from Lumen. Um, so we're going to begin just by um, providing a brief overview of SUNY OER Services and the partnership that SUNY has with Lumen Learning. And then we'll move into a live demonstration of Waymaker for Economics, and we'll leave some time for questions. Laura will also be um, monitoring the questions, so feel free to either type in your question or um, turn your mic on and, and ask your question. We have a small enough group where feel free to jump in anytime or we'll address your questions at the end. Uh, over the last two years, uh, more than 155,000 SUNY students and 1,000 SUNY faculty have embraced the freedom and power of OER. SUNY OER Services is building on that momentum, but we can't scale and sustain OER across SUNY alone. We need partners. Lumen is a leader in OER and a natural partner for SUNY, given its experience, expertise, and leadership in open education. Together, we help campuses remove barriers, offer affordable and easy to access adaptable open course materials, and Lumen Learning's vision is to enable unprecedented learning for all students and impact affordability, access, and student outcomes through effective adoption of open educational resources at scale. And this aligns with SUNY's mission to offer the people of New York educational services of the highest quality with the broadest possible access. Uh, so Lumen Lear Learning is a partner that listens to the needs of our SUNY faculty, responds to the latest educational technological capabilities, incorporates OER into those technologies, and uses data to improve OER efforts. Lumen's OER courses and platforms are available to all SUNY faculty and students at no charge through this system level partnership. SUNY OER Services and the SUNY Help Desk provide direct support for faculty and students using Lumen's platforms and OER courses. And that's as simple as you can use the OER at SUNY.edu and those emails get directed to SUNY OER Services and or Lumen directly for us to assist you. So together, we're intensely focused on ensuring data-driven, high-quality OER is available to SUNY students on day one, that the resources are offered at an affordable cost, and in SUNY's case, you can't get better than free. That's pretty affordable. Um, but the most important goal is to improve student success. So in our SUNY Ready to Adopt OER course catalog, which is found at oer.sumi.edu. You will find peer-reviewed course materials and ancillary teaching resources for over 70 subjects, all of which are available at no cost to SUNY students. Um, so if we click into the course catalog, um, you see you have subject areas up here that you can choose from. Um, there is a search bar where you can put in the, the words that you're looking for for your course. Um, and then there's the, all the courses here that you can browse through, and each of them will show you which platform they're available in. Um, and in just a moment, I will turn the controls over to Jameson, and he's gonna show you a demonstration of Waymaker, um, which is courseware that combines OER with personalized learning, learning tools and some analytics to strengthen student learning and success. So let me get back to here. I Thank will you. stop sharing and turn that over to Jameson. Thanks, Michelle. That's great intro. Um, and uh, definitely encourage everyone to, yeah, check out oer.suny.edu to look for courses. Um, everything that I'm going to show you here uh, is publicly visible on those websites. It's all open, right? So we don't have it hidden behind anything like a paywall or, or uh, restricted in any way. Um, and likewise, for those of you who are outside of SUNY that are joining us today, um, you can also view that site, but you can also view lumenlearning.com slash courses, um, 
where uh, we have a very similar catalog of all of our publicly available um, sites. So what I'm showing you today is our macroeconomics course. It's one that we wanted uh, to highlight because it's one that we've completely revised uh, as of late last summer. Um, and so it's just been freshly redone. Um, and it was actually revised by uh, the author that was key in authoring the, the original micro and macroeconomics text for OpenStax. Um, this is Steve Greenlaw out of the University of Mary Washington. And uh, after he was uh, done completing those texts with OpenStax, he always lamented that, uh, you know, the lack of interactivity um, um, and other issues around the courses, he, was, he wasn't quite happy with those uh, additions as they were. So we started to work with Steve uh, intimately in revising these courses um, that he is actively teaching with, and he's actually conducting some research uh, on how uh, not just OER, but the OER in this Waymaker format um, is improving his uh, students' experience and learning, um, their grades, their throughput, the retention, all those kind of things. Um, and he'll be presenting at the Sea Tree Conference in St. Louis this year. Um, and that's the Economics Teaching and Learning Conference um, that happens each year. So, and I'll be there with him um, talking about this. So, if any of you are able to make it out for that, uh, it would be wonderful to see you there. Um, and likewise, if after uh, the brief demo we have today uh, or at any time, if you would like an introduction to Steve, he is happy to talk about his experience in teaching with this and, and why he thinks it's uh, the best option out there. Um, I'd be happy to make those connections for you. Uh, sometimes it's better to hear from a faculty member, uh, you know, who's actually taught with it uh, exactly what's going on. So what you're viewing on the screen right now is obviously within uh, SUNY's uh, centralized Blackboard uh, LMS instance. Um, we also can embed this course in Canvas or Moodle or D2L, if any of you are working with those LMSs. Um, we can work with any of those and it'll come in in a similar fashion, but uh, for our purposes today, we'll just be showing you what this content looks like within Blackboard. Um, and what will happen is if you decide to uh, explore one of these courses um, uh, and then maybe ultimately teach with it, what we would do is send you a, a cartridge. It's a very uh, simple zipped file that you just with a few clicks can import into a blank uh, LMS course shell. And this is what it'll look like when it comes into your course shell. This is kind of the, the default. Uh, you have a couple folders that are you can see are kind of grayed out here. They're visible only to the instructor and those are the goodies that are for you um, as the instructor. So we have a list of the course contents, um, but we also have a folder full of resources for you. Um, and in this case, we have the Waymaker faculty tools, um, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, some recommendations on pacing. Um, so the course is set up for a traditional like 16 week semester. Um, however, if you're teaching in a shorter section, um, we have some recommendations on what modules uh, you might want to combine uh, to teach in similar weeks, um, ideas like that. Uh, we have a PDF, of course, uh, for the course that's a print-ready PDF. So um, students can not only save it to their devices to view the content offline, um, but um, if they do have certain chapters that they really prefer to have like a print, they could certainly print those out. Um, that's available to them. Um, and they can also keep that um, ultimately. So if they're going to take macro first uh, before going into micro, um, they could have a PDF that they could keep with them. Um, but of course, like I explained, all of our content is, is available publicly on the web as well. So that they'll always have permanent access to the, the content. They don't lose the, the access like with uh, some traditional publishers are experimenting with right now. Um, we have a link to all the assignments. Um, there's a lot of problem sets. So a lot of the assignments will uh, pull on um, either data or uh, we'll have exercises that you can download in a, a Word doc format so students can actually work out some economic problems. Um, and then we also have some question banks so you can devise your own assessments within Blackboard. So if you wanted to create your own midterm exam or your own final exam, you can do that uh, within the LMS as well. And of course, we also have a link to uh, where you can get a hold of uh, support at Lumen if you have any glitches or uh, any questions about um, content, uh, we're always here to support you. And the benefits to SUNY uh, instructors as well is that we're actually intimately working with uh, Open SUNY Help Desk uh, team so that they can also provide support. So there's lots of avenues of support for adopting these, these courses. So those are the goodies that, that come with the faculty resources. Um, let's look into the, the folders now that all the students will see. So the first one is a Succeeding with Waymaker module. And the idea being that students probably haven't encountered a Waymaker course before. And this kind of gives them 
a little bit of instruction on, on what to expect and we kind of recommend touching on that maybe in your first meeting like when you would normally go over the syllabus you could also touch on hey this is what the course looks like and then after that we get into the the chapters uh, as it were of, of the course um, any of the tools that are available to you in Blackboard or whatever LMS you're using are available to you here and it won't break anything in the course. Excuse me. So like if you wanted to touch on uh, scarcity um, before economic thinking, you can just rearrange the, the folder order. And likewise, um, if you have your own content, like you're like, actually I have this, you know, really beautiful, uh, really well written article um, from a, a news source that I like students to read first off. When I click into that first chapter, you could of course add a link to your you know, library's database of, of that news article. You can uh, bring in your own assignments. You can bring in your own discussion boards. Anything that you've used in the past in an LMS or that you wanna create from, uh, from scratch on, on your own, you're welcome to bring in here. Again, it, it won't hurt anything. Um, but by default, in this particular course, we have um, in every one of these chapters or modules, uh, we have a study plan at the top, and that's where the actual uh, content is, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, but for each of these modules, we also have a discussion board. It's a Blackboard native discussion board, so you could edit that, um, um, and you can uh, assign points to it if you like. Um, and we also have an assignment. Um, and sometimes, like I said, these will come with like a, a problem sets and exercises to try as well. Um, in this case, uh, it's a problem set that you can uh, download and, and, and then write out some answers for. And then at the end of each one of these modules, we'll have a quiz. Um, and this is a quiz that students are, by default are allowed to take twice. Um, the idea being that they would take it once, they're going to get some feedback. They can try again after doing some studying to hopefully improve their score. Um, the, the concentration then is on, on mastery learning as opposed to like a punitive uh, approach to assessment. So let's take a look at the study plan. So when we open up the study plan, these are gonna be organized in the same way for each one of the modules. It's good instructional design so that students can anticipate how things are organized. We'll always have a get started section at the top, um, which has like a little orientation, introduction to the chapter kind of thing. And then they have a pre-quiz uh, where they can kind of come in and, you know, perhaps they've heard of some of these economic terms before, or, you know, maybe uh, in other uh, courses, they've actually applied some of their mathematics uh, towards economic problems. You know, it could be some things that they've actually encountered before. Um, the students aren't coming to you uh, as, as empty vessels to be filled with your brilliant knowledge. They're gonna have some no knowledge of the world. And the idea being that here I can turn on some of our uh, data that we have loaded in here. And you can see these tiles here change color from being gray. So after I take that pre-quiz, this is going to reveal for me, but oh, okay, there's some parts of the course that I actually have a pretty good grasp on already, and there's others that I don't. Um, and the idea here is to help students be, you know, more effective studiers, um, uh, to learn how to be good students, and to get a little bit of feedback. It doesn't change what is available to the student. It just is trying to give them a little bit of information. This is the personalization that Michelle referred to earlier. Um, and then after they work through the content, uh, they have a little summary area in this finish strong uh, where they can summarize the, the, the concepts uh, and then hopefully they'll be ready for the quiz and they can go take the quiz. And after they take the quiz the first time, again, these, these modules will update um, and give them some feedback of where to focus their studies to improve their score and they can take the quiz a second time. They can take the quiz multiple times after that as well if you grant them the privileges. So if there's a particular case where a student needs some, uh, another attempt, either there was a glitch or, or you think it's warranted based on what the student's trying to do, that's always uh, in your power uh, as well. So another good thing that we've done here with this course so like i said we, we started with the open stacks economics text and and i've heard mixed reviews from uh economics faculty um on that open stack some say hey it's, you know it's it's perfectly uh, sufficient others like steve greenlaw saying like eh, it's it's a little weak in some areas and i'd like to have a little bit more uh, interactivity so i want to show you a few examples of the interactivity that we've really added to some of the concepts in this course so um, one good example is in our supply and demand module. Again, if I look in here, I got the study plan, a discussion board, there's an assignment here, 
um, a problem set to try things out and then a quiz. Let's go into the study plan. And again, same situation. We've got the get started with the pre system, economic systems, demand, supply, and equilibrium. So in this equilibrium section, there was an area that we noticed in our first iteration of this course where students were consistently getting the assessments on this, this topic wrong. Um, so we broke into, I'm gonna go into this finding equilibrium section here. And um, in this section, we see, okay, the learning objective is uh, trying to understand uh, what happens to supply and demand in equilibrium when there's a change in both supply and demand. You know, what, what are, what's about the, the shifts that are taking place there? Um, here we have an example of the postal service. Again, lots of interactives here where, you know, you get some questions and you can get like an answer. Ah, so you get a chance to get some immediate feedback on, on what's going on in these. Um, if I come down below this section, there's an area where I can try things out, check a question. I'll get immediate feedback on the, how that's going. Um, changes in supply and demand. Now we can see what happens when things start to move and change along these graphs. It's giving us really kind of exploding what was uh, a very complex kind of topic and looking at it piece by piece. Uh, we've got some video topics to, to uh, help further explore and explain. And I should explain to you as well that um, everything in these courses has been accessibility reviewed. So all the content is screen reader compatible. Uh, when there's images, there's alt text. When there's videos, they've been captioned. Um, so we've kind of taken care of that uh, area for you as well. I'm gonna pull back out to the study plan. And I think in this uh, changes in equilibrium is where we've got a really good kind of interactive. Um, so, this is, uh, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see a little bit more on my little laptop screen. But in this exercise one, good weather for salmon fishing, we use a case study from the real world, right? Where we're talking about how the environment um, impacts uh, the supply of salmon um, and then how that might affect demand. And in the original OpenStax text, this is a fixed graph that shows a very complicated, you know, the, where it shows the, the change uh, in the, the environment um, and, and the supply and demand, um, and it's one graph that was shown all at once. And this is what the, the graph I was talking about earlier where um, we saw that students were not getting this concept, uh, trying to understand the, the four steps that are at play here that are explained up here, step one, two, three, and four. Um, they weren't catching it all when it was in one fixed graph. So our team took the graph apart. Again, thankfully, since it was openly licensed from OpenStax, we could manipulate change things and turn it into an interactive where students can then say, okay, here's step one where we're gonna dr draw the supply and demand curves and where they intersect is our equilibrium point. But what's happening now when, uh, you know, we've had some uh, rain and good weather, um, how, do we, uh, how do we expect that to affect the supply of salmon or the demand of it? And will, what will affect? Well, um, let me take a guess here. Demand, no, it's giving me some feedback. That's not right, so I can try again. Supply, check. Ah, okay, yes, the rain and good weather, of course, will affect the amount of salmon available, not the desire for salmon. Okay, good. As a student, I can start to now see, okay, now we're seeing the supply change over. Again, what am I gonna see? I'm gonna see a maybe a decrease in the overall. No, that's not right. Of course, it's gonna be, let me try again, increase. So again, it's a, a way for a student to play with, uh, understand, and get some immediate feedback on a comp. So instead of being fed this really complicated graph all at once, it's kind of pulled apart and built upon itself. So we have lots of examples throughout the course like that. So we don't have much time to dive into all the examples like this in here, but uh, I wanted to give you a peek at some of the, the content um, and how, my goodness, how things look so much nicer in Blackboard when we view them through, through this kind of content rather than uh, how we traditionally see things in Blackboard. Um, it's certainly a lot better here. Uh, I think a much better learning experience for students. So I definitely wanna pause here and ask you uh, what questions uh, are uh, coming up for you so far.
And Frank and Patrick, if um, you can either unmute yourselves and use your mics, or you're welcome to use the Q&A tool, if you can see that at the bottom of your screen. Um, I'm also, I also have an eye on the chat as well. If no questions are immediately coming up, I, I would be happy to uh, jump into um, an area where I breezed over before, um, but something that can be incredibly helpful to instructors. I've gone back into that faculty resources folder where there's those goodies as I referred to them earlier. The one at the top here is this Waymaker faculty tools. So, so far we've seen how the content looks to the students and that personalized learning experience for the students. Well, these are some of the, the uh, tools that come in for the instructor um, and they are gonna help you um, in communicating with your students. Uh, you can set up some semi-automated messaging so that when students do take that quiz I was referring to, they can get an email from you that says either, hey, well done. Um, these are messages that you can customize so they're coming from your voice. Um, or it'll give them some study tips, like, hey, I noticed you kind of struggled with your first attempt on the quiz on the supply and demand. Um, here's some areas where you could kind of study up. Let me know if you have any questions. And those will go out automatically to the students. And I know from my experience as an instructor, um, I always intended, uh, especially if I was teaching a hybrid or an online course, to keep in touch with students and certainly intended to keep up with the students that were doing really well in the course, give them some kudos, but inevitably those are the ones that I would uh, uh, have to put to the bottom of my list and, and pay more attention only to the students who appeared to be struggling. Well, in this case, you know, you're starting to engage with your students um, overall and they start to get some feedback. You'll also get, if I look at the view individual student histories here, oh, it looks like these courses don't have our uh, student data loaded in. But in this particular view, um, what you can see when you look in here is you can see how students are doing as they're going through the course. And you can see how, uh, whether or not they're actually clicking into the modules and actually doing any reading. Um, so you can see like if you have a student that's a struggling in, in class um, and you can see whether or not they've actually opened up any of the material yet, or if they're just jumping to the quiz, um, which can be helpful for you to understand if they're coming to you saying, oh, I'm doing all the reading, but I'm, I'm not quite getting it. Um, you can have a little bit of insight into to how they're going. Um, there's uh, the automated messaging tools you just set up once at the beginning of the semester and they will run in the background uh, for you. Um, and then uh, lastly, if there are students who are appearing to be engaged that do seem to be clicking through and working with all the interactives but are still scoring low on the quizzes, we consider those a special case. So that's a student who is struggling um, even though they're, they're trying. Um, so those are students that will be flagged especially for you at the top um, and you can send them a message uh, that you'll get a chance to edit before it goes out, uh, out the door because um, those are students that we feel like um, can really benefit from working with you um, and getting some extra help. So like we were saying uh, at the start, uh, these courses uh, are available at no cost to SUNY, SUNY students. Um, so all you need to do is go check out that catalog, oer.suny.edu. If you see the course you like, there's a button you can click right from in there that uh, you can try the course out. We will send you one of these cartridges and you can bring it into your LMS and you can kind of take a closer look and see how, how it is in there and start to think about, hey, if I wanted to start teaching you know, this summer or this fall, how would I want to organize the course? Uh, take a look at the assignments. So, you know, are these assignments uh, ones that you want? And really start to, to customize it to, to your needs and, uh, and give it a shot. And your, your students can have access to this really high quality content, uh, really high quality content um, at nothing uh, compared to the 100 or 150 or $200 textbooks uh, and other software uh, samples that they have from before. So again, happy to open up the, the floor to any uh, questions that you have. Um, and if not, we should be sending all of you one of these courses so you can start uh, start working with it right away. And we have macroeconomics, we also have microeconomics. And um, for those instances where you might be covering topics from either of those, if you've got uh, one course that, that kind of touches on content from both of those, we actually also have a course where we've mashed up both the macro and micro, it's a, a huge course, right? Like almost 30 modules, but 
you could bring the whole thing in and then get rid of all the ones that you didn't want and you could have a customized kind of um, mashup of uh, macro and micro topics depending on how the curriculum is organized at your institution. Any questions at all for Jameson or me? <laughs> um, and just a reminder that if you do think of questions at any time later, you can always um, send out an email to oer at suny.edu. We'd be happy to address those. Those go right to our dedicated staff at the SUNY Help Desk, and they will filter your question to um, either those of us that work directly with OER on the campuses or to Lumen. Um, they can, if you email them, they can also um, set up um, one of those demo uh, courses that Jameson was talking about if you want to get in there and play around a little bit. Um, so any questions at any time, we'd be happy to address those if you don't have anything today. Um, and we thank everyone for attending. Appreciate your time. I know everyone's busy, um, but feel free to reach out if we can answer any questions. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone. Thanks, everyone. Take care.